I've seen people move other people's pieces for them in that kind of game. It's like, <gasps> no. And that's fine if you all agree to it, but... Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. no. But still, that's a yeah. massive breach of etiquette. <laughs> yes, hugely, hugely. <laughs> Rusty Quill presents Enthusiasm. Hello, friends and fans, and welcome to Enthusiasm, the show where we talk about a few of our favourite things. I am your host, Helen Gould, one of the best Rusty Quillers, and today we're talking about board games, and I am... Tactically excited to be joined by <laughs> Anil, Ian and Navy. As always, we shall introduce ourselves alphabetically. So, Anil, what are your pronouns and what do you do? Hi, this is Anil, he, him. I am Rusty Quill's Chief Compliance Officer. Uh, I'm the one who keeps us safe, keeps us <laughs> on the straight and narrow. <laughs> eh, I've got a nebulous job description. Oh. We should clarify that's in a health and safety capacity. Adel is not yeah, head health of security. And, yeah, health, yeah, health and <laughs> health and safety, legals, that sort of thing. <laughs> lovely to have you back on the show. It's lovely to be back. Uh, Aww. Next up, Ian. What are your pronouns and what do you do? Hi, I'm Ian. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, they. Uh, I'm an actor, improviser. Uh, I teach people to act as well, which is madness. Let's face it. I was also Trevor Herbert in the Magnus Archives, so I think I was probably the best avatar of a power that, that they had. <laughs> yes, I think that's uh, that's agreed by all. Certainly the cuddliest, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cuddly in inverted commas? Or... <laughs> yeah, a little bit knifey, but, you know, still. Yeah. <laughs> who, who wasn't on the Magnus Archives? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much all What's of them, What's yeah. a little stabbing amongst friends? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Actually, Aaron wasn't. Well, Aaron wasn't. Actually, no, he got his stabs in with his words. So. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> verbal stabbing. <laughs> and finally, Navy, what are your pronouns and what do you do? Uh, hi, I am Navy. My pronouns are she, her, and I am a tech support assistant at Rusty Quill. Yay. Oh, I should also, since I welcomed Anil back, welcome back Ian and Navy as well. You have also been on here before. No, I haven't. <gasps> This is my first oh. time. Ooh. Yes. I, yes. I have recorded with you before, but it you was a have. lost episode that will never be heard. Yes, you were in the secret episode that we had to <laughs> get rid of. Well, let's get into it. Um, please hearken back to the days of yore. Tell me, what is the first board game you remember playing? Because for me, I think it was Ludo. Really old school one, mm. which I can't remember much about, except that it had like four different colours and was kind of spirally looking. <laughs> it's known by a bunch of names. Um, I think oh. it's more commonly known in the US as Parcheesi. Yeah. Oh, is that what it's... Yeah. Yes. I spent so long wondering what Parcheesi is. <laughs> yes. No, it's Ludo. Ah. Uh... <laughs> which, you know, weirdly enough, one of the simplest games, I mean, etymology of its uh, name, Ludo, I play. Oh. It's Latin. Oh. But yeah, no, I... Well, like Lego, because Lego yeah. is we play. Mm. So yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Weird enough, actually, you saying Ludo, yeah, that probably would be, for me, like I'd completely forgotten about that. But I, I remember playing one of the versions here in the UK where you've got a a popper in the middle of the board that rolls the dice. Like you push down on this plastic... Yeah, pl- yeah, this plastic dome. It rolls the dice and then you move rather than you roll the dice by hand. Uh, yes, I remember that. I had a game that did that and it was the most fun part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Just slamming it. <laughs> but for me, like games I played as a young'un mm. would probably be... Those, those simple, very early kids games, Ludo, I mean... In inverted commas, snakes and ladders, but like we all know, that's not technically a game. But... Uh, what? Well, you've got no choices yeah. in it. There, there's no choice, there's no skill. It's literally no. a roll of the die and you move the board. There is nothing, there are no mechanics, there are no, well, I mean, there are the, the board ring, there, yeah. <laughs> there is literally only one path. Oh, dear. Anyway, so... That sounds like Annals Snakes and Ladders was the first, in quotation marks, game yeah. that yeah. you played. But like, yeah, so things like chess, Cluedo, uh, those sorts of mm. things were early, early board games for me. Do you know, I've never played Cluedo. 
Oh, it's really good. I like it's a it's a very straightforward design. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you like mysteries and figuring things out, it's actually a very solid solid game. Oh, Navy. How about you? What was the first game that you played? Um, I was trying to think. I think the first games I would have played, besides you know, like uh, chess and checkers, uh, would have been more um a family games like Sorry or Trouble, uh, because that's the kind of stuff that. Uh, like summer camps would have laying around. <laughs> What's uh sorry? So sorry, I actually get these two mixed up in my head all the time. Okay. And I found that a good amount of people also do. <laughs> sorry is the one with uh, there's these little uh these little pegs as pieces and, and you go around the board and you use cards. Like everyone has like a deck of cards that they draw from and that sure. that gives you your moves and things. Uh, and you, the goal is just to get all the way around the board, um, but you're able to like to push people back and uh, and mess with their ability to move around the board. And uh, it's it's a lot. It's pretty simple, a lot of fun. And then trouble is is one of the ones is the one that has uh, the popper in the middle. Uh, is one that and it's just you're trying to get around the board and the dice is is rolling and that's really i don't remember I, I, I seem to remember there was also a way in trouble that you could knock back opponents pieces but i don't remember it would have been it, that would have been 20 years ago at this point <laughs> Good grief. uh but yeah the first like real actual board games uh i started playing i guess we can i'll talk about later but <laughs> okay oh <laughs> um, yeah but those were uh <laughs> uh the first like simple you know family games that oh that i played and what about you, Ian? I mean, I've got Sorry down as well. Sorry's quite old. Uh, ah. So I, I played it. It had pleasingly round cards, my version. Yeah. <laughs> which was just, you know... I, oh. I actually also remember <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, but that's that's Ludo. Sorry is Ludo, but with cards. Or Parcheesi. Oh. Yeah, it's, oh. it, it's the same game, pretty much. Um, oh, and it is fantastic. That. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, even the yeah, even the boards look like yep. real. Yeah, it's yeah. it's just another part cheesy variant and uh huh. there, there's a lovely way that you can play it with taking on more than one card, which again, as Anil said, gives gives you more choice. So if you have three cards in your hand you can go, Oh well I can do this or I can I can I can mess up somebody else's go or I can get myself further forward. Yeah, I loved sorry. It, lovely design <laughs> again. It's all about the the look of it. Right. <laughs> Board games are beautiful objects, and they should be. Especially given that there is a renaissance in, in board game board game design, particularly over the last 10 years. Yes. Uh, now that crowdfunding has made board games actually more feasible to produce. So, so I mean, let's, let's continue on this vein, because I hadn't written this down, but this is something that's coming out uh, quite a lot. So do we want to talk about, like, what makes a good game? Are we going to end up talking about what <laughs> game design is? Because... Let's go for it. Let's yeah. do it. Let's go for it. We touched on it earlier, but let's continue. What's a good game apart from one where you have fun? <laughs> well, a game's a simulation, isn't it? That's the thing. Uh, so even a game like Ludo is simulating a chase of some way, some some kind. So I think a good game simulates something well and gives you something of the feeling of what what it feels like to do that thing. So if it is you know, killing zombies or piloting a starship or being a bunch of bugs jumping around in a bug pile. That If it, if it simulates that well and makes you feel that thing, yeah. that's good game design to me. And it doesn't require a lot of rule. I mean, Hungry yeah. Hungry Hippos, <laughs> there is almost no uh no like mechanics to that uh, but don't get me started it... on the house rules for hungry hungry hippos <laughs> honestly <laughs> but it does what it sets out to do Absolutely. it simulates uh, it simulates a chaotic feeding environment uh, very very well uh, yeah <laughs> it's accurate simulation of hungry hippos. and yes it is dexterity based and i have a general aversion to dexterity based games but uh, uh that is me yes. um but yeah, it's uh, video games, well, either board games or video games, any kind of game. Um, it just, interactivity is such a powerful tool, like, like j- jumping mm-hmm. off of what you, you two were saying. And I think the best uh, kinds of games use that to their, uh, to its full extent. Like, use the fact that the player is directly interacting with the game to really not always say something, but to really, like, uh, to poke at the player, you know? <laughs> 
mm. to yeah, kind like, of get into their head. Yeah, and that interactivity can be can be manifested in many ways. Like often it is you being able to interact with your other players in order to affect the ball game. But like there are there are games where you are effectively four people playing an individual game, but because right. it plays out on the board, uh, it 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 generates that. Like your decisions don't direct directly affect your opponents but by dint of it you all four of you or well all x of you sitting around uh, the table and the board uh, you've got uh, you've you you create that interactivity you create that that fun environment like deck building games um mm. are often um i would see as uh, things like so things like dominion um yes. which is a really really good game but you Generally speaking, you are making individual decisions with the shared resources uh, that don't necessarily affect your opponent because each of you has your own deck of cards and things like that. But it creates the fun interactivity because of what comes out of that. Uh, I see, I see. But, you know, all sorts of things like good cooperative mechanics. Uh, mm. I'm I'm a big fan of cooperative games, uh, mm. um, particularly in, in, in this day and age. And I think they're... If you can create a good environment for for cooperation, uh, then it also has a lot of through throughputs into you know decision making and you know influences on the rest of your life and other activities <laughs> because playing. I mean, how 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 deep into psychology do we get here? Because play <laughs> is one of the one of the best ways to. I'm, I'm not phrasing this right, but. You know, play is so important to our development, uh, yeah. um, both on a social level and on a uh, on an intellectual decision making level. Uh, mm. Board games are so so good at, uh, at at pushing that and helping develop those skills. Uh, I also think what board games are often good at is um, helping you learn things about other people. Because mm. I feel like you can learn a lot about someone if they're losing at a game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and sometimes it's uh, when they're winning. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that too. A bad loser isn't isn't great, but a bad winner is terrible. Oh. <laughs> no. yeah. I, I I I I know people who are both. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> and you no longer play games with them, I assume. Uh, no comment. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, just jumping off that, like there are a whole, there is a whole set of games, um, that have cropped up over the like last 15, 20 years in particular, which are term theory of mind games. Uh, um, and they are definitely games that help you get to know and you w- and kind of like work better. The more, you know, people, uh, the better you're able to get in their head. Dixit. And this is a game like Dixit is something uh, that we played mm. on, um, RQ Gaming and Giving a couple of times. Uh, and it is a really, really good theory of mind game because it's like you, you, particularly if you know people who are really good friends with some of the other players, uh, yeah. you're, you are pitching your clues to them um, so that you can maximize the amount of points that you're getting. And it's like Code Names is another one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will wax lyrical about like code games, uh, code games, code names as a uh, as a good game. Mysterium, which is the offshoot of Dixit, uh, um, similarly. So, so when you say theory of mind, you mean games where you're trying to guess what someone else is thinking? Yeah, um, because you are because you are looking, or you're trying to get people to to buy into a certain thing, like what you're guessing or what you, the clues that you are putting forward, uh, mm. um, you are relying on shared experiences and shared uh, interactions uh, by knowing somebody well enough that it's like, right, if I laid this clue down, uh, mm. they should know the reference or I know that they know this reference. Uh, um, so they should be able to pick up what I'm putting down. Uh. So, this is This is making me think about how, improv works yes what do you think about that ian i mean yeah i mean as an improviser and i I think i'm an improviser because i love games because Mm. as a child i wanted to play more and more games and then i saw that there was this intersection between performance and games playing i yeah and that that i think that thing that anna was saying about the group mind of a game is so much fun 
that yeah. you can, you know, you can not taunt. Taunt's a terrible <laughs> word, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, banter is probably the right word, but it's... It, oh, it, no, it, banter's a horrific also, word that, that makes me feel that, ill. That's, al- um, that's also got horrendous connotations. Yeah. Friendly teasing. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, you can tease, control, um, maybe influence people mm. in, in mm. Uh, gameplay. There's a great game called Skull. I don't know if anyone's played Skull. No, what's that? So Skull is a bl- it's a sort of a bluffing popery type game where you're laying down cards, one of which might have a skull, and you're trying to tempt people into turning over the the uh, card with a skull on it. Oh, and it's it's got so much potential for getting into people's minds, getting into their yeah. heads. You know, one of my favourite things to do is to lay down a card and go, "That's definitely a skull," and just <laughs> look somebody in the eye. With a little smile, <laughs> and it, you know, if devious. You do, oh, evil, devious, horrible man! <laughs> I don't know why I'm on here, uh, <laughs> but you know, but it's so much fun, and the, and again, the drama of that game when mm. somebody is flipping over tiles, and they've said they're going to flip over six tiles without seeing a skull, and they get five flipped, and then they're choosing between one and the other, and in many ways, it doesn't matter whether it is a mm. skull or not a skull. The reaction in that moment is, again, like improv, improv is the only art form where the performer and the audience make the discovery in art at the same time, and the same mm. thing happens in Skull. So it's that moment you can never recapture. You could talk about it on a podcast and it sounds dry, <laughs> but <laughs> if you're in the room... No, I know what you mean. It's thrilling. Yeah, and that, that kind of group think is particularly what attracts me and can be as... as in it's explained there in terms of the mind games that you can play with people if you're trying to bluff them um and such skull yes yeah, skull is a really good bluff coup is another good bluffing game uh, oh i um, love coup and i know i'm you've you've played coup haven't you helen uh, a lot yes yeah, yeah. um and we have had yeah another rq rqgg fave um <laughs> that, that has been played out on stage um or the flip side with um, cooperative games where you are talking about your actions before you enact them. Um, Pandemic, mm. the betrayal at House on the Hill, uh, all good games where you will want to talk about, talk through your actions uh, um, and hopefully come to a consensus decision about how you're going to act and how the game is going to play out. And in that sense, you're driving you're driving your own narratives in much the same way as uh, improv does. Uh, what are your thoughts, Navy? I don't know a ton about improv. <laughs> um, oh, it doesn't have to be improv. I'm just wondering about this theory of mind thing because you seemed uh, about the game design thing because you seemed keen to. Be um, a- um, no, yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. Um, board games are just a really interesting space for things like that. Like, uh, I, I think of. Um, in a video game space, I think of things like Trouble in Terrorist Town or uh, even uh, Among Us uh, most recently. <laughs> um, but, and it's, it, it feels like really, it feels uh, significantly easier to pull that off. Um, or not easier. It just, it feels uh, different in a, in a virtual space compared to when you are directly around the table uh, looking someone in the eye and saying, um, no, actually, I'm not a werewolf or, mm. <laughs> oh. or you know, something or whatever. Or it's, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to decide what point I'm, I'm trying to get to here, but it's just, it's a much different f- a, a feeling. And I totally agree with what everyone's saying, but yeah, it's a much different feeling when you actually have to sit there and look at someone while you are betraying them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This actually reminds me of, um, a, uh, I don't know if any of you know about Dropout TV, which is sort of the, yeah. sort of what college humor turned into in terms of like making uh, video right. content. Okay. Um, they've got a really good show called Game Changer, where it's a different kind of game every episode. Like sometimes it's improvising musical and sometimes it's, um, who can make the best animal noises. Um, anyway, but there's one called, I think it's called Paranoia. Ah. In which, now they're in, um, I think, California, where marijuana is legal. And the aim of the game is they have about, I think, eight people. And um, the host, Ali, gets two of them really high. (laughs) And the aim is for, and then they do like some basic exercises, like, you know, write down all the countries that begin with P or something. 
And at the end of each round of the basic like activities, everyone has to guess who's high. It's a really good concept. It's, oh, that's it's fantastic! So, <laughs> it's it's werewolf, but with with weed. Yeah, but we're so <laughs> you see, I would probably I would probably play that more than I am I am willing to play werewolf these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny as well because there's also a I think I think the role is a poser, which is someone who has to act high. Nice. <laughs> uh. <laughs> anyway yes it's a i really recommend that show it's really funny it is pretty fantastic i would also recommend it <laughs> yeah although occasionally someone does have to forfeit because they're just too high to function <laughs> um <laughs> something something high functioning yeah let's not <laughs> insert your own joke yes there. Mm. do you know what um actually that's the perfect time for a break so Here are some adverts, and we'll be back in a second. Hello, folks. Helen here from Rusty Quill Gaming and Enthusiasm. I'd like to tell you that the UK gaming dice company, The Dice Dungeon, have teamed up with Rusty Quill to produce two exclusive limited edition dice sets inspired by our award-winning podcast, Rusty Quill Gaming. Each set includes seven polyhedral dice with bespoke designs inspired by the players and characters who brought RQG to life. There are two collector sets and a bundle with both. The We're Still Working on the Name dice are a set of seven custom polyhedral dice featuring icons representing the player characters from Rusty Quill Gaming. They will come with a custom presentation tin. And the LoloMG Deluxe dice are a set of seven custom resin filled metal polyhedral dice featuring icons representing the player characters from Rusty Quill Gaming presented in a wooden collection box. This set will feature other exclusive, exciting extras yet to be revealed. Find out more at www.thedicedungeon.co.uk or find each dice set and a bundle collecting both sets at thedicedungeon.co.uk forward slash collections forward slash rusty dash quill or click the link in the description of this episode. See you around and have fun. And welcome back. Okay, so we've talked about our first games and what a good game is. So with that in mind, let's talk about some some favourites. Like, what are your favourite games to play? Navy, if you don't mind, I'd like to start with you. So I really like uh, a lot of, you know, the standards. Uh, Betrayal is one of my favourites uh, currently. Um, there's a game, uh, Arena of the Gods, that... Uh, I discovered through my previous job that I really enjoy playing. Uh, but currently, I think just for the amount that I play it, I have to call it my favorite. Um, there is a board game slash card game slash deck builder uh, based on the Super Hot video game. Oh, oh, how does that work? It's really interesting. So you have a board in front of you that has a bunch of of like enemies uh, and obstacles and things. And you have uh, cards in your hand that you use to remove them uh, from the board. Mm. And then cards that you remove go into your deck. Cards that you play go into the uh, the computer or the enemy's deck. And then it just, cards just move from left uh, to right with the enemy's board and uh, every card has a has an effect like there might be a card that has an effect um shoot a bullet and you take a card from the bullet deck and you add it to the enemy deck and there's just a lot of there's a lot of ways that you can lose if either decks are run out <laughs> after you lose if you have a certain amount of bullets in your hand you lose uh, it just really like it cycles through and it actually plays with that concept that the game does of time moves when you do because you decide uh, how many cards, you know, can get cycled through every round. And it's mm-hmm. very stressful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it can be played just by yourself. It can be played co-op or against another person. Uh, I normally just it should just play it solitaire style. <laughs> oh, that's neat. Yeah. I know I know very few like board games that can be played solitaire yeah it's uh it's how i normally play it's it's stressful <laughs> oh, but it's What's fun it uh it's just called super hot uh yeah it, it'll have uh it has the if you've ever seen the video game it has the same cover yeah. and everything it's oh yeah. okay is it an officially yeah yeah it's t- an official time okay i i think i don't remember who actually made it um i don't remember if the if the actual 
uh, Super Hat developers also made this, or if they just uh, licensed it out. But it is an unofficial product, yeah, or unofficial mm-hmm. tie-in. I mean, nice. Ian, what's your favorite? I mean, I cycle through them, honestly. Okay. Uh, uh, at the moment, I'm really enjoying games that I can take to the pub because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> going out's a thing and I love it. So I've got some lovely little card games. Uh, there's one called Six Nimpt, which is German for take six, I think. And oh. it's it can be played with up to ten players. Ooh. So there's a lot of chaos in it, and it's very funny, and it's about laying down cards, and if it, if the roll gets to six, whoever put that card down has to take all of those cards, and they're all worth negative points, and it's hilarious. I love that one. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And you, so you, you put down a card thinking, this one will be absolutely safe, and then other people have put other cards that mean that you are, you know... Suddenly not as safe as you believed you were. <laughs> like, how, right. how did you have 35? It's lovely. <laughs> um, and there's another one, uh, The Crew. In fact, it's two games. There's The Crew um, Quest for Planet Nine, where you're on a spaceship. Uh, mm. The Crew Deep Sea, where you're on a underwater submarine. It is basically a trick-taking game. It's a cooperative oh. trick-taking game. Oh. So it's there's a campaign of about 50 missions and each mission has a different parameter that is uh some combination of what you do with the cards so like maybe one person has to win all of the tricks or somebody can't win a trick with a nine or this kind of but you play it without ever referring to what you have in your hand so you're trying to do these things and then somebody will play a card which means suddenly the entire miss mission is screwed and everybody looks at that person and goes, how dare you? And it's fantastic. <laughs> it's lovely. It is a cooperative game where you can't do that thing that sometimes happens in cooperative games where people quarterback it and play the entire game. Mm-hmm. So right. I love it. I love it for that. Yeah, which is the, which is the danger with a lot with cooperative games as a whole, yeah. where um, the one drawback, basically. <laughs> what do you mean by quarterbacking it? So quarterbacking is usually where there is a disparity of knowledge about the game um often when there ah. is a new player coming mm-hmm. into an established group or you know everybody but one or two players knows how to ga- play the game and you know the in inverted commas received wisdom on how you play the game uh, basically come to the fore it's like no this is what we should do in order to be optimum this 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 and this and you you overrun other players input i so. see so it's like the bad kind of rules lawyer yeah Kind of, yes. kind of thing, but yeah, it's where one person insists that they know, or one or two people, or the group think uh, where you, where somebody is new, insists this is the way we need to play. I will like right on your turn. You move your piece here. I'll move my piece here, and this is and this is the best outcome. Uh, yeah, I I've seen people move other people's pieces for them. <gasps> kind of game. It's like no, and that's fine if you all agree to it, but yeah, <laughs> but still, that's yeah. Massive breach of etiquette. Mm-hmm. Yes, hugely, <laughs> hugely. Absolutely. So games like The Crew where that... Or there's another one called Magic Maze where everyone's playing all of the characters, but, um, Helen, if you were playing it with, with us, you could only move the characters up, I could only move them down, and it could do them left, uh, oh, maybe you could do them right. And we're trying to get them to certain places, but we can't speak. Oh, so, neat. That's actually really cool. That's hilarious. Oh, I love it when games restrict your communication. Oh, and I'm looking at this. It looks like the board like it's a, changes also. Yeah, it's like almost you build a, it as you. A, you know, it's, it's a modular board, so every time you play it, it's a different maze you're trying to get through. Fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. lovely. That I'm very, very happy cool. to play that. The only communication you are allowed is there is a... Uh, big wooden sort of pole or stick and you can grab it and rap on the table and look at the person (laughs) in the eye that you're trying to get them to do something and they're not doing it and there's a sand timer running out how dare they i think i think somebody brought this to a get to the games club i used to be part of um but i didn't play it myself Uh, that's so funny (laughs) yeah it's it's passive aggression in a board game i love it i love it (laughs) Okay, I desperately want to play that. Anil, how about you? What's one of your favourites or the favourite? I, I, I've mentioned code names. Like I love word mm. games, regardless Me of too. how good I am at them, um, <laughs> because play, trying to do words against a timer often isn't isn't great for me. But mm. you know. Uh, 
it's probably unsurprising that, that, that I like word games. Um, Euro style games is also so worker placement ones often they're often quite complicated, um, but they uh, so we're talking about things like Agricola um, oh. uh, and and Carcassonne and, and things like that. But well, Carcassonne is a bit of a hybrid game. But I would say my favourite game. At the moment, like Ian, I cycle through through a whole bunch of but games that like I actually own and really enjoy playing on a repeated basis. Lords of Waterdeep, um, it is a D and D themed worker placement game set in the Forgotten Realm city of Waterdeep, where you are playing you play as hidden lords. Uh, uh, and you've got to go around complete quests, uh, um, and you've got limited numbers of spaces on the boards to put your pieces and your agents and things like that. It's a lot of fun, and it has a very good online implementation um, that I have been playing a lot over the last year or so um, on in one of the communities um, I stream with. Uh, Dice Forge, really, really nice game, and you build your own dice, sir. Uh, <laughs> and you customise your own dice on the uh, as, as you go through the game, which is, Ooh. like, the ta- you, I can't underestimate how good that tactile feel is uh, mm. to it. Um, mm. Card games like Citadels, Love Letter. Oh, Love Letter is amazing. I love... That so, sounds it, familiar. And, and it's so simple. Like, and as Ian was talking about, games you can take down to the pub. It yeah. comes in a little velvet bag yeah. and a, a stack of cards right. and a couple and a set of cubes. And it's great. To, um, I love small box games like that, that you can just... Um, Exploding Kittens is another one. Yeah. Although yeah. we're not really differentiating between like card games and board games here, um, really. But, you can um, put the cards on a board, it's fine. Tabletop yeah, absolutely. games. Yeah. Dominion is one because my sister and brother-in-law have that. Uh, and that's a game that they like. Because games I can play with my family are few and far between. Uh, um, as much as I'm trying to get my niece, uh, I, I will be getting my niece to try and play more games uh, once she's able to grasp uh, rules and have the patience to sit down to, to play things. Ticket to Ride, really I simple. I played that for the first time recently. That's really fun. Yeah, the base, the, the, the base USA game for Ticket to Ride, really, really good. And it's, again, one of the few games that we have been able to teach my mum to play uh, Mm. Uh, and play as a family uh, um mm-hmm. it's such a good th- the expansions vary um th- some of the supplemental boards are a bit iffy i don't really like the uk expansion very much uh, it's got some weird rules <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i played the europe one yeah europe is solid but again you've got yeah the the weirdness about remembering what the tunnels do uh, um, <laughs> yeah. is, is a bit is a bit, but for for a straightforward game where you've got limited number of actions but it generates a lot of fun the basic drive but yeah I would I would say things like I've been playing a bunch of stuff of um like board game arena um which have a bunch which has a lot of good licenses uh, um Azul is one I was introduced to recently that I really like. Um, mm. Yeah, it's a t- it's a tile based uh, pattern game. Very very sweet. It runs relatively quickly. Yeah, and then like the cooperative games, I haven't pre- I haven't played enough Betrayal at House on the Hill for it to really be a favorite. But I love the concept of it. Uh, mm. um, but pandemic, I really want to play the legacy version. I've, I've watched. So bad. No, I haven't watched pre- people play that legacy. I've watched Risk Legacy and Pandemic Legacy. Wait, well, you know, I love Pandemic. I don't like the look of Pandemic Legacy. Betrayal on the House of the Hill is the one where you have to figure out who the murderer is. Um, not quite. It's, you've, There's like a ghost? Oh, you're four people um, exploring a house and the house is built as you go. And every time something like a significant event happens, uh, you roll to see if the haunt occurs. Oh. And if the haunt occurs, then one of the four people uh, have the potential of turning into uh, the monster. <gasps> Oh, whatever that is, and there's a bunch of variations. Of... We did pl- we did play it on RQGG seventeen uh, to um, <laughs> interesting effect. <laughs> oh well, I wasn't there then, so <laughs> yeah. If, if if we've got time, about uh, we, yeah. we'll talk about traitor mechanics a bit later. I I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So one player is the murderer, but you don't really. It it doesn't start off. Oh, that so way. the murderer doesn't know they're the murderer yeah. until like halfway through the game. Correct. Or indeed, how they're going to do the murders yeah, or anything or why, like that. Why it's... they're the end, why they're the bad guy? Uh, <laughs> oh, all. that's really fun. Right. Yeah. It's it just it's a thing that just yeah. happens to one of the players eventually, Aww. or sometimes you know. It, 
everyone is still on the same side. Uh, yeah. So there are scenarios where uh, no one uh, is traitor. not often, it sounds like. Not often. No, it's not, yeah. I have a soft spot for this very silly little game called Dobble. Oh. It's a little card game, and it's kind of like Snap. Yeah. But um, instead of remember, numbers... Remember what I said about not liking dexterity-based games? Yeah, yeah, it would <laughs> Dob- be terrible Dobble is one of those uh, that hits that spot. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, instead of numbers... There are a series of pictures on each card and um, there's always at least one picture the same on every card, which yeah. the mathematics of figuring that out is is something I can't, I cannot comprehend. But yeah, so you basically, whoever gets rid of all their cards first wins. I really like it. It's very easy and simple and you start yelling very loudly. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a lot of fun. It's yeah. unfortunately not one for me. Yeah. <laughs> I played a Star Wars version and I lost mostly because I couldn't name the things. I was like, uh, a spaceship, another spaceship, <laughs> some dude. <laughs> So we're coming towards the end of the episode, but we have time for one more question. And as is often the case on this show, I'm going to go with like an advice question, which is what do you think is the ideal first game, like first board game for someone to start with? Like what's a good intro if someone didn't, if for example, someone didn't grow up with say Ludo or Monopoly or any of the others that we mentioned at the start? Well, it really, it really depends on, on the genre that they want to get into, right? Uh, like if you want to start with, uh, dungeon crawlers, oh, oh, there's one deck dungeon is one that I've always recommended to people. Uh, just a general, like small brawl games, a King of Tokyo and Arena of the Gods is fantastic. Small World and Seven Wonders are awesome, like simple, more simple strategy games. Uh, there's just, there's so much uh, to look into. It really just depends on what your play preference is. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with, yeah, as, as Naby said, depending on genre. Um, but ones that I have found straightforward enough to teach to other people and get them in, particularly if they aren't gamers, uh, um, Ticket to Ride. As I said, it's the one game that mm. we've been able to teach my mum to play because it is really straightforward. Uh, the... Other one, there's a tile, um, a tile game called Alhambra, which is another good one. We've been able to um, to to teach her that. These are straightforward enough mechanics with a good amount of variation and a little bit of strategy and a little bit of player interaction that you can that you don't necessarily have to push towards, particularly if in Ticket to Ride, like. Because there are routes that you can compete on and things like that, you can have like little bits of a house rule to make it a little bit more friendly. Or okay, we won't. If I know you are going in a particular, I won't deliberately go and stop you doing that. Like not necessarily in the, the rules game, but even as rules as written, it's a very straightforward game to um, to teach people. Code names for anybody who likes word games is a very mm-hmm. it's a very is good and a very straightforward game to um, to teach people, even if the actual nuances of, of it become difficult. It's like, how do I pair that word and that word? People will have seen me and Alex playing this on <laughs> RQGG to yeah. varying degrees of success. Uh, um, completely opposite brains. <laughs> yeah. And and this is what we mean. This, and this goes back to the theory of mind thing that we were talking about earlier. Um, you, very good example of um, of how these of how these things work out. Uh, but again, Alhambra. Ticket to Ride, Code Names. Yeah, those would probably be Love Letter, again, mm. would be mm-hmm. really, really good go to games to teach people. Uh, Can you talk to me about Love Letter? Because it sounds familiar, but I don't actually know what so it is. So, Love Letter is a rules based uh, a card game where you've got a deck of cards and each of the cards has a different role on it and they're numbered. So, number one is the guard. Uh, Number two is the priest. Or not one of them is a priest. One of them princess, courtesan, and king, and a prince, and things like that. And hmm. you like draw two cards. You decide which one you are going to play because each of them has an associated action with them. Um, and the idea is to be the last person standing, i.e., to not have your role um, identified. And you then play this for a various round. So, like, if you're forced to discard a card and you discard the princess or something like that, you automatically lose. And I it's, see. It's a, it's a very simple but layered game that mm. um, you can get to grips with very quickly. It's played relatively quickly. 
Um, and mm-hmm. you can moderate how fast you want your game to be by how many cubes you need to, how many rounds you need to win in order to to be crowned the ultimate winner. <laughs> yeah, it, it shares some DNA with Koo, so yeah. I think you would like it, Helen. I think I would like it as yeah. well. Mm. Ian, what do you reckon is a good beginner game? I mean, I'm going to refer everybody to the to the answers I've just been given because they've <laughs> been that that basically is the starter pack <laughs> of 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 um of good games i think that's been said i would add skull in there because skull is fantastic um of course i love a party game mm. so i'm gonna chuck a party game in here um my f- current favorite party game is called dream crush oh is it is, it's not that one which has the telephone um no, oh, no, okay, it, right. no people think it's got the okay. telephone. it doesn't have the telephone right, okay. in, but it's it's very stylized 80s sort of uh bot looking box and it's a simulation of Blind Date, oh. the television program. Basically. I love Blind Date. Oh, you would love this, right? Oh. So you start off with three people that everybody could date, and you all write down who you think everybody would date. And as the game goes on, you find out more and more about these people. So they might, uh, you might find out one of them enjoys taking the dogs for a walk on the beach. That's good. That's nice. But then you might find out somebody just likes writing beat poetry and reciting it on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> not on the bus. As, you had me at the first on part, the bus. but then not the second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And basic, because of the way the cards are written, these people become more and more annoying as the <laughs> game goes on. So it's not who would somebody date because they'd really like to on this date. It's which of these <laughs> three people would... Helen stand five minutes with. <laughs> Who is the least worth dating? Wow, it really is a dating simulation. <laughs> it is. A, you see, there you go. And you get that feel. And it is fantastic and it's hilarious. And What is the, it? Dream Crush. Dream Crush. And the art on it is beautiful. They've got loads of different people in to pose as these Dream Crushers. I think it might have been originally kickstarted. Mm. And the, the, the photos are worth the entrance <laughs> price alone. Okay. These are some horrendously, horrendously, horribly wonderful people. Okay. The next time mm-hmm. I have some kind of board games night, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy that game and I'm gonna play it. <laughs> it's gonna be great. It, it, it does yeah. sound right up your alley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds Fantastic. hilarious. Oh, all right then. We're now out of time. This oh. has been great. This has been so much fun. Um, oh. Thank you all so, so, so much for coming on the show and talking about board games. Thank you. Yes, thank you for, thanks thank for, you for letting us, us spell, uh, enthuse about this. Uh. That's the <laughs> aim of the show. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, listener, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Um, and I will see you on the next episode. But for now, it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from all of them. Would you all like to say goodbye? Goodbye. Bye, Bye then. <laughs> oh. Enthusiasm is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 4.0 International License. It is directed by Helen Gould, produced by Lori Ann Davis, with executive producers Alexander J. Newell and April Sumner and edited by Marissa Ewing, Tessa Vroom, Michelle Snow and Catherine Ranella. Thanks for listening.